Hi, this is Michelle at AppWorks, and today I'm going to show you how to create a proper loop within a script. Let's get started. Loops are one of the most powerful development techniques you will come across in any coding language. And FileMaker is no different. A loop can automate and repeat a task that could otherwise take several hours to do manually. So it's really important that you as a developer learn how to use them and write them the correct way. We'll start with a loop script that I've started. We'll start by adding our loop script step and the end loop will also be added automatically for us. And it's within these two script steps that you will add your process that you actually want to loop through. For example, we could keep this really simple and simply set a variable. We'll set it to a counter and we'll set it to be counter plus one. Now, if we run this script, this loop will run and every time it comes across this set variable script step, it is going to add one to its current value. This is great, but unfortunately we forgot something really important, which is a way to exit the loop. As of right now, this loop would run infinitely until we killed the script manually. So in addition to our loop and end loop, we have another script step available to us, and that is the exit loop if. If the condition that we enter becomes true, then the script will automatically exit the loop. So if we say if the counter is greater than 10, then exit the loop. I'll save this and let's go ahead and use our script debugger to test this out. We'll open up our data viewer so we can watch the counter increase in value as we iterate through. We'll begin our script and we can see the counter is now a value of one. And we're continuing through the loop and we should see it increase. And we're gonna speed this up just a little bit until we get to 10. And now we'll set the counter to 11. And as you can see, as soon as we hit next step, it exited because that condition became true. Typically, in most loops, you're going to have a process that happens in between the loop and your counter, the process that you actually want to repeat. So in this case, we'll keep it really simple and let's just add the word loop over and over again. So we'll type loop and the word loop and we want a a uh, line break in between each of these words. So we'll go ahead and add a paragraph at the end as well and say okay. So let's save this and go ahead and test our script once again. Open up our data viewer so we can watch as our counter goes up. And right now we have a value of one loop, two loops, three loops, and let's just run this through until we get to 10. And at this point, if I click on the next step, the loop will exit because we've hit our cap of 10. If we open up our loop variable, we can see that there are in fact 10 repetitions of the word loop. Now, this is just something really basic to get you started thinking about how loops work. Let's go back into our script workspace and show you one more really common workflow that you're gonna see. So I am going to keep my counter because what we're gonna do is loop through our found set of records to see how many there are. So because we'll be looping through a list, the next thing I'm gonna do is say go to record the first one. So we start out at the top of the list. As we loop through, I'm gonna to continue to 
increase my counter and then I'm going to say go to record request next. Once we hit 10 we will exit the found set. Now in this one it looks like we only have um, four tasks so I'm going to change the counter to exit after three. I'm going to save this and we're going to script a bug one more time, use the data viewer. We'll go to our first record. And as you can see, we are now looping through the records in our found set as we are increasing our counter variable. Now, once we get to the fourth record and our counter is now greater than three, the script will now exit. Another way to exit a loop is actually using the go to record script step. As you can see, when you've chosen next, there is now an exit after last option that will also appear. If I turn this on and I disable this exit loop script step, which I'll do now, I'll save this script and I want to show you once again that the loop will actually exit after the last record. So we'll loop through and as you can see record, record was missing. It got to the last record in the found set and it exited the loop automatically. As you can see, giving your scripts a way to exit a loop is very important. Whether it's with the exit loop if script step or the go to next record with exiting after last on. Another thing that I like to do when I'm scripting loops is use the script debugger first. The worst thing is to have a loop that runs infinitely with no way to stop it. By using your script debugger to carefully test your loops before running them will save you a lot of time and headaches, believe me. So be careful and have fun with your loops. Thanks for watching.